Well, hello again. This is Jonathan Wright, uh, Dr. Wright from the Tahoma Clinic in Tukwila, Washington. Today, I'm going to review the cause and cure for gestational diabetes. And it isn't what you've heard. In fact, what you've heard is probably a version of what I just looked at before doing this online. American Diabetes Association website. And what do you know? They're talking about diet and exercise and uh, cutting your weight down and maybe seeing your doctor if it doesn't get better and using insulin and other diabetic medications. And then I went to the WebMD website and they said the same thing. I wish these folks would read medical journals because in 1975 and 1977, I believe those were the dates, that could be off a year or two, were published two articles in which all the women but one and there were 14 in one research study, and there were 13 in the other, and all the women but one got rid of their gestational diabetes in two weeks by taking a vitamin. Nothing to do with diet and exercise. Also, the research on why women get type 2 diabetes stretches all the way back to the 1940s, and it's not at all the same as type 2 diabetes which these websites are recommending that gestational diabetes be treated as if it were, is not at all the same as gestational diabetes or, or type 1 diabetes. So, let's be clear about what those different things are. Type 2 diabetes is the most common one out there. And sure enough, it's caused, and I think you've heard me talk about this before, by an over response to sugar and refined carbs in the diet and up goes the insulin and if it stays up the body develops insulin resistance but that insulin has to get the sugar into the cells so the insulin level goes higher the insulin resistance goes higher as that insulin goes higher up goes the blood pressure up goes the cholesterol for guys their testosterone goes into estrogen yeah that's type 2 diabetes it's called metabolic syndrome before it gets all the way to type 2 diabetes but you know high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high blood sugar. That is a genetic thing where we're too responsive to the sugar and refined carbs. That's the mechanism of how we get to have type 2 diabetes. How do we get to have type 1 diabetes? Well, unfortunately, those pancreatic islet cells die. They can't make insulin anymore. With no insulin, up goes the blood sugar. Mm -hmm. And that's the cause of type 1 diabetes. Now, the cause of type 2 diabetes and the cause of type 1 diabetes, did I have three fingers? There's no type 3, um, is entirely different from the cause of gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes, according to researchers, clear from the 1940s to these two experiments I told you about in the 1970s, gestational diabetes is called, caused by a weakness in some enzymes. These enzymes metabolize the amino acid tryptophan, we've all heard of that, into a whole variety of things. The two major things are serotonin and melatonin, which we've all heard about. But something we haven't heard about is a little bit of that tryptophan is metabolized into something called, I'm not kidding now, xanthurinic acid. I didn't make that one up. Xanthurinic acid. And that's normal to have some of that. Here's what happens in gestational diabetes. In gestational diabetes, all that estrogen that a woman's body normally makes during pregnancy puts pressure on some of the enzymes that tryptophan uses to go to melatonin and serotonin and other places. And so instead, the tryptophan is turned into this xanthurinic acid over here. And so because of all that estrogen, and the weak enzymes over here. Nothing to do with diet and exercise. It's estrogen and weak enzymes. Because of that, the xanthurinic acid level rises. So what? A Japanese researcher named Kotaki found that xanthurinic acid grabs onto the insulin molecule and won't let it work. That's called making a complex. And if that insulin molecule is by itself, it can fit into a receptor, which is what hormones do, fitting into receptors. But if it's got too much xanthurinic acid on it, mm, mm, it can't do its job. And if the insulin can't do its job, up goes the blood sugar. The cause of stational diabetes is too much xanthurinic acid, which resulted because of all that estrogen. What's that got to do with type 1 or type 2 diabetes? This is known. You can look it up. 
And I know I'm getting excited because it's so sad that women are told, as they were on the websites I just mentioned to you, they're told that, oh, well, this is treated like type 2 diabetes, and gee, your baby will usually be healthy. Well, that is, as my Italian grandmama would say, Bologna. It isn't true. A very recent publication, it's just within the last year, came out and told us that if you have gestational diabetes beyond 20 weeks, your baby is more likely to have autism. Did you hear that? If you have gestational diabetes, your baby is more likely to have autism. Don't you think we should get rid of this problem? Now, I've got something to say, folks. You can cure gestational diabetes with one simple thing. You straighten out the enzymes that were weak, you bolster them so that tryptophan keeps going to the right places and not too much of it goes to the wrong places, anthurinic acid. How do you do that? Well, just like the researchers did, and reported in real medical journals. The lead researcher for one of them was a fellow named Spellacy, and the other article was in somebody named ben Benick, B-E-N-N-I-N-K. But this has been in the medical journals. What did they do? One time it was 14 ladies, another time 13 ladies. They had them all take vitamin B6. Yeah, 50 milligrams twice a day, and within two weeks, all but one of these ladies, her gestational diabetes had cleared up. Vitamin B6 not a diet, not exercise, and her baby's risk of autism went down. That's what this recent publication tells us. Oh, by the way, when the xanthuinic acid is too high, there's a stretch of publications goes back from the 70s. You give the experimental animal, you give the person vitamin B6, and the xanthuinic acid goes down, so it can't complex the insulin anymore. So the insulin can be effective. It's as simple as that, everybody. You can cure gestational diabetes. If your doctor can't, and you keep getting this foolishness about diet and exercise for gestational diabetes, just go on down to your local natural food store, your compounding pharmacy, the Tahoma Clinic Dispensary online, and get yourself the form of vitamin B6 called pyridoxal phosphate. P5P you'll find on the label. And the reason you want that form is it's the most active form and it's likely to do a better job than the plain vitamin B6 from back in the 70s. And look what the plain vitamin B6 did all by itself. Now, why, why, why? This isn't general knowledge. And online in WebMD and the American Diabetes Association and Actually, I'm very sorry, but the doctors aren't taught it in medical school, so most ladies with gestational diabetes are not told that there is hard science that says what the problem is, enzymes being weak because of the pressure of all that insulin put on them. Now, most women, their enzymes are strong enough to withstand that pressure from all that insulin, but the women who get gestational diabetes, their enzymes are not strong enough to withstand all that pressure. But they can be bolstered with vitamin B6. And the proof is because the xanthurinic acid that went up and complexed the insulin goes back down again with the extra vitamin B6. Folks, you are not going to hurt yourself with vitamin B6, pyridoxal phosphate, 50 milligrams twice a day. You can cure yourself or anybody else from gestational diabetes. Now, there is one precaution. Vitamin D6 as pyridoxal phosphate cuts down on a hormone called prolactin. Oh, when do we need that? Well, if we're a lady, we need it. We're going to lactate and feed that baby. So we don't want to be taking that much vitamin D6 when it comes close for the child to be born because you might not be able to nurse as well. But you can take that much and get rid of your gestational diabetes and then keep track of your blood sugar and start cutting your vitamin B6 down. And if the blood sugar stays under control with less vitamin B6, so much the better. And you keep tapering. And if you're a little dubious about how to do this tapering thing, please check with your doctor who's skilled and knowledgeable in natural medicine. Not in WebMD stuff and not in American Diabetes stuff. Vitamin B6 is curable within two weeks. These experimenters did it. For more details on this, folks, Yes, this is going to be an article in an upcoming issue of Green Medicine, the newsletter that I put out. And if you're interested in reading many more details 
and looking at all the citations and references, of which there are many, and then finding the information for yourself, go to anh-usa.org. That's anh-usa.org. And you'll see, yeah, my picture. And click over here, and you can get to the newsletter and read that article and all the other articles in there, if you wish, about how you, if your doctor can't and nobody else can, you can cure gestational diabetes as the researchers did in the 1970s within two weeks. Well, I don't necessarily always get this worked up about something, but really, when a cure and a cause has been known for three or four decades and it's not being implemented, there's no excuse for that. So if nobody else wants to implement it, and you, yourself, your wife, your friend, your sister, your daughter has gestational diabetes, you can cure it. You can. Thanks for listening.